Hello, welcome to the University of Brighton podcast. I'm Richard Newman. This week, my guest is Jim Kernot, second year 3D design and craft student who you can catch on Netflix show, The Big Flower Fight. How are you doing, Jim? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for having me. No worries. Look, thanks for coming on. First things first, to anyone watching or listening who hasn't watched The Big Flower Fight and you want to or you haven't finished it yet, spoiler alert, probably best to save this for another day and um, let's give you a few seconds to turn off okay here we go congratulations <laughs> <laughs> really great show um and uh, forgive the the lazy description but obviously this is like a gardening version of the great bitch bake-off really it's a format that we're all very familiar with anyway challenges in every episode and um, you ended up getting all the way to the final with your dad ralph we'll talk about that but um, when you originally applied, could you ever have thought you would have got to that stage? Not in my wildest dreams. <laughs> we entered um, and we got to the first challenge. And I think on the, on the way to beginning the challenge, me and dad literally said, uh, let's just give it a go. Um, and we, we weren't picturing getting past the first challenge. And then we got to we got through. We got to the second challenge. We had the same same mindset. Didn't think we were going to get through that, but we did. And then we did. And then we kept going through, and we ended up in the final. So yeah, it was it was really good fun. And uh, as I say, we wouldn't have imagined getting that far, but we did. Mm. We did. And and the judges um, really took you as well. Dad and lad became a thing. Um, but let's go let's, let's go back a bit um before we come back to the show you're obviously from a very creative family um with your dad's um dad's work as well i mean you clearly have some very some passions that you like to do in your spare time between the between the two of you where does your interest in design come from um i have always done like art in school so i did like gcse art and i did photography a level media A level. So I always had that kind of creative spark. And then at college, I also did a foundation art year. And then that spurred me on. I, I realized that art is actually really, really good. Being creative is what I really enjoy. And then that's how I ended up coming to the University of Brighton. <laughs> yeah. And what, what made you decide to come to um, University of Brighton? And how have you found the, the course and the environment? Um, yeah, so the, it was the course 3D design and craft. I hadn't I went to, through quite a few interviews and things like that and looked at other universities. I won't name any. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it was just 3D Design and Craft was just, that was the one. I had to go for that one. It was so good. And uh, um, the things that people were making from previous years, I, I really, really liked. And I thought, that, that's a bit of me. I want to do that for three years. <laughs> now, have you found it? Really good. Yeah, really, really good. Um, just a bit of a shame with uh, lockdown. We've had to, I had to, we had to close um, second year a bit early, but we move on and uh, hopefully we'll be back in September and I'll be in the workshops again. Yeah, and we'll come back to university work shortly. Um, let's go back to the Big Flower fight. How did you find out about it in the first place? Uh, it was actually the university's fault. <laughs> <laughs> it on. came through. It came through as an email. Mm -hmm. so I've, I'm guessing it came to everyone at the School of Art. And uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was stupid enough to respond. And uh, we, I, came, I, I saw the application. It said, it said uh, sort of gardening show for television. And I came and they wanted pears. They wanted uh, gardeners, designers, anything to do with plants. And uh, dad dad's a gardener I do a design course and I thought let's just give it a go and so did dad dad had the same mentality we didn't think we were going to get anywhere mm. and uh they it seemed that they like us they <laughs> liked us and uh we ended up on the show so yeah, yeah but yeah the... I have I had the universe I had the university to blame for being on the show <laughs> what was the process <laughs> like then to get on it what did you have to do um pretty much like any job interview really right. you sort of had a had an interview, had an, um, like an audition, mm -hmm. and uh, they must have liked what we did. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a new show, so did you really know what to expect? Did anyone at any point um, tell you what, what sort of show it might be like? 
We heard along the lines of uh, Great British Bake Off, we knew there was something to do with giant plant sculptures. <laughs> and other than that, it was a complete shot in the dark, mm. to be honest. And me not having much experience in the garden before, it was even more of a shot in the dark. I just knew that I wanted to give it a go and be creative. Yeah. I remember in the second episode, you said this direct quote, I don't know my dandelions from my daisies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in the end, do you think it really mattered because of your creativity and your dad's experience? Um, I think what, what uh, was good for us was I came from the point of view of design and dad came from the point of view of uh, gardening. So he did know the plants and I think it merged quite well. And I think it showed in some of the things we did because I would do, I'd think about how it looked, but then dad would be the plant guy and tell me and tell the judges what plants needed to be where. And it was, it was very cohesive. It was very, very cohesive. Doing it with your dad, how special was that for you? Um, I'd never really worked with dad before, just mm -hmm. on, on small things. That's, that's all that we'd done. Uh, so it was very, very brand new. But I can't, I can honestly say I couldn't have done it with anyone else. Mm -hmm. It was just... It was difficult, but it was a dream to work with him, <laughs> to be honest. If I'm, if I'm totally honest, it was really, really nice working with him. And uh, if we were to do it all again, I'd definitely pick him again. Because you have the stresses and, um, and you'd have to know each other quite well, I think. And obviously, um, your dad knows you, you and your dad know each other very well. Um, but you can, sort of, you can sort of be a little bit more, you can take out a little bit more frustrations on each other, can't you? You can be a little bit more honest without having to really worry about the relationship long term. Yeah, I mean, we obviously had small little spats and things, but <laughs> he's still going to be my dad. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, but when you turned up on the first day, what did you think? You have contestants from all over the world with all kinds of skills and abilities. Um, was there a point as well where you felt a little bit intimidated by the skills that some of them had and experience? Um. We hadn't really seen what each other had done uh, for, the, for the first challenge anyway. So there wasn't that initial fear because we weren't sure what they could do. And then we started to make, and as you, as you see in the first challenge, Henk and Jan, <laughs> and most of the rest, well, all of the rest of them started making incredible things. And what, what dad told me to do was just to focus on what we're doing don't look around the dome don't look at the other people's uh, creations look at them when we're done and that was a really good point because i didn't want i, I needed to not be distracted by these other things because obviously these people were florists these people were these people had done these things before and me and dad were brand new so it was just get your keep your head down and uh keep on making that smell for the first challenge yeah definitely yeah Hank and Yam were um, brilliant to watch throughout the, uh, the entire series. I mean, when you, you also turn <laughs> up and there's, <laughs> they're really great to work with as well, I guess, on the show. How much did you get to interact with them? Um, yeah, we got to interact with them all the time. We yeah. were annoyingly close. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I love those two. I love them all. And uh, it was, it was just their skill is ridiculous we hadn't we barely planted a thing uh, in the time that they were almost finished in, like, in an hour we'd turn around and we'd done we'd had a bare frame we turn around and see Hank and Yan and yeah you could see what their creations were already it was quite infuriating to be honest how long did it take you to get used to the the fact there's a TV crew around all the time, you've got um, one of the best florists in the world, and Kristen Griffith, and you got there, um, you've got Vic Reeves and Natasha Dimitri, you might have seen from TV, and then suddenly they're coming around, and it's all that sort of very sort of chummy, uh, you know each other straight away, you sort of have to become, you have to try and act natural and yourself straight away in front of these cameras, doing something that you've never done before mm. as well. It must be pretty tricky. Yeah, it was very, very strange. Uh, we, we were just trying to do our best 
Uh, and when when you turn when you're busy doing things, making things, and then you turn around and there's a big old lens in your face or a camera, that's very very daunting. And it didn't it didn't it took quite a long time for me to get used to it. It was probably three or probably three or four challenges was when I was actually quite comfortable. But then I reckon if you were to get a camera on me now, I'd, I'd feel like uncomfortable again. It's, <laughs> it's that I don't think there's anything you can get used to fully. Yeah. I guess it's probably because you get to know all the people that are around as well, the production team, your, uh, the, the other people that are in the show as well. Um, mm-hmm. So it all becomes a bit more normal and you're in there for, hours aren't you long days <laughs> yeah. how exhausting is that because i think when i watched the first episode i can't remember how long they said that you've got 20 hours to make it or something was that 20 hours non-stop or was that broken up yeah i don't i don't think you could do 20 hours non-stop <laughs> i it wasn't was, explained it, and i was like whoa this is gonna be <laughs> they're just gonna be dead on their feet at the end of this i mean we did have it broken up over a couple of days okay and we were still dead on our feet <laughs> it was ridiculous it was like working in a greenhouse as well in that mm. dome so it was a lot of effort but um yeah it was definitely split over split over some evenings so we could get some rest in between <laughs> yeah um so you said in the second episode that we touched on earlier um that you, at that point you felt out of your depth um and the dress that you ended up creating ended up looking great the hop dress um what was that kind of the turning point for you in terms of um your self-confidence about going forward in the program and what you could achieve yeah i think that was definitely a turning point i one of the judges simon said i need to be i need to have the confidence that dad has in me uh, to have it in myself and when i heard that i thought yeah that's 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 true i need to have that confidence and i need to not stand i I need to have my own i need to show my own strengths in a way Uh, because in the in the first couple of episodes first couple of challenges uh, i was definitely following dad's lead and then after that we got into a bit of a rhythm of it and it was i think yeah definitely after that episode after the dress episode i realized why we were there and i realized that i can actually I can do this and uh, I think from then on I became a lot more comfortable and I was happier with what we were doing. We touched upon one round which was the highlight for me and I'm sure the highlight for most people watching it when they're thinking about you and your dad on it um, when you created the anxiety monster it clearly mm-hmm. meant a lot to you um, and your dad. Yeah yeah it was it that was a big one that was a big undertaking for the both of us uh me especially but dad also to see me struggle to get the get the message across and he wanted because it was it was a it was a labor of love for me in a way it was completely of my imagination uh so he wanted to do it justice so that was definitely one that took a toll uh sleepless nights definitely whilst building that one right yeah I mean, it ended up getting you in the final, though. That was ended up being pretty good. And um, and 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 Kristen was obviously he came into the into the monster with you as well. Um, how important did you feel it, it it was to to talk about to discuss mental health to 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 discuss um, anxiety? Uh, well, I have, as you can see, I've str- I've struggled with it, um, and one of the turning points for me was talking about it and getting that message out there, just saying to, just saying to my family, saying to my friends, yeah, I do struggle with anxiety. And from that point on, it was, I felt better. So that's, that's the message that I wanted to convey to the viewers, to people watching, even just to the other contestants there, that if you are struggling, don't suffer in silence and, and speak out about it. Speak out to your mum, your dad, your love, ones and uh it will it in my experience it really really helped me and i hope it helped others beyond your parents um and your family did a lot of people know um about what you'd been going through would this be the first time that some people may have seen it i think so yeah i think quite a few people i've had quite a few messages from like friends from school um friends from college even friends from uni uh saying wow i'm i'm impressed that you kind of came out with that i didn't know about it and uh 
it was it was nice and i've had a lot of people that i know saying me too i i struggle with it too i know exactly what you're going through and i totally understand it understood your whole message and that was really nice and hopefully now we can talk about it more because that's the message i wanted to get across yeah absolutely and we've just had mental health awareness week as well sort of highlighting how important it is to discuss these things with with people um really important Mm -hmm. and since the program finished i assume you did this last summer um in the yes. heat of last summer so when did uh have, have you still do you still speak to some of the other people that were involved in the show we speak to everyone we've really? got a big group wow. chat yeah we've got a big okay. group chat so we speak to all the contestants on a daily basis yeah uh we we send each other silly selfies and uh just keep in contact and find out what everyone's doing it's, mm. it's been really really nice and i've definitely got uh lifelong friends because we've been through a lot <laughs> mm. yeah uh, do you, you, uh, have you got any plans to all meet up when all this coronavirus craziness is over i really really hope so i think we need a big party mm. uh, we need to do some dancing and we need to mm. i want to hug them all again mm. how much has your sort of life changed since like well last last week really since <laughs> since last monday i mean even looking at your instagram followers that just shot up by I think it's I. I think when we started talking, when we were talking about this before the program even started, I think you were on a couple of hundred, weren't you? You're on like five thousand, nearly six thousand at the moment. Uh, so clearly, think, like everything yeah. sort of shot off a little bit. Do you, how how's how have things changed for you? Uh, physically, not much has changed because we're still in lockdown. Before mm. the show came out, we were in lockdown, and we're still in lockdown now. Um, it's just a lot more people know my face. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot and a lot of people have seen and watched the message, which is which is good. Uh, it kind of feels like a bit like we're in limbo still. Like not, I haven't seen anyone to talk about it to. I've just I've just been like messaged and things like that. Yeah. But yeah, you, the fact that a lot of people, which is good, which is what I like, a lot of people from all over the world have actually messaged me on my Instagram saying that they understood the message. And if they can reach out to me, hopefully they can reach out to their loved ones. Yeah, amazing. Um, and have, have other students at the university um, been in touch with you about just, uh, were they surprised? Did you have to keep it a secret or were you allowed to tell people what you were doing? Uh, I, kept it, I kept it partly a secret, but because uh, filming actually overran slightly for the start of the year, start of the school year, right. um, <laughs> so I wasn't there for like two weeks so everyone was thinking where is Jim <laughs> and uh, so I kind of had to tell I had to tell a few of them just to get the get the message out there but when I turned up they were they were surprised and uh, I didn't give any spoilers away so they actually hated me <laughs> how many um how much did this all take over your your life because between all the challenges you must you know you get through one and you're you're really obviously delighted that you get through to the next the next challenge but then i guess leading up to that again you just it just takes over whilst you're planning with your dad what you're going to do next yeah uh it, it we had quite a few brainstorming sessions and uh it was that to be honest that bit has kind of slipped past my mind i can't mm, remember yeah. what we were thinking of at the time it was quite a long time ago and when we got wrapped, so wrapped up in what we were building, the, the, those bits kind of mm. whizzed past. I can't remember them anymore. Uh, we, took, we took quite a lot of time and there was quite a few, uh, yeah, as I, say, as I say again, sleepless nights thinking about what we're going to build. Mm. How, um, how much do you think it's helped um, your skills in general? I think... Obviously, I learned a lot of skills. I know, now know how to plant things. I know how to plant grasses. <laughs> do, you still, uh, do you still plant things one year on? Are you in the garden? <laughs> I, think I, need, I think I need a few years out. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of it. <laughs> but uh, what was the question again? I forgot what you said. Uh, do you, think, do you feel, feel like the, the, the program has kind of helped your, your skills in general? I mean, it's gonna be, yeah. obviously, you've come back into... When you came into... When you finished the show, you came into your second year. So... Do you think that during this second year, some of those things from the program have kind of influenced what you've done? 
since then? I think I think definitely the that idea of confidence mm. has definitely followed me. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest takeaways from the show is just to know what I'm capable of. Mm. I know what I can do in a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 16 hours, I can build one of these blooming great uh, <laughs> sculptures. Uh, and it has given me the confidence to go into the next project with like 110%. And so that, that's one of the biggest takeaways that I've had from it is just that, that drive to make things. We talked a bit, a lot about um, you and how you found things since the program came out. What's your, how's your dad sort of reacted to the, uh, what sort of attention is your dad getting? Uh, is he on social media? What sort of things did he get? Is he just getting calls or people telling you having to pass on messages for him? Yeah, but he doesn't have social media. I, I say, I say, <laughs> I say he's too old for it. <laughs> <laughs> and what does he say? So I've got I've got quite, I've got quite a few messages saying uh, yeah let, let your dad know we love him and I've had quite a, I've seen someone posted on Twitter saying that they want to be adopted by us <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was quite funny but there's no room in the house so we can't have that. Maybe you've been doing some um, uh, some videos on on Instagram. Maybe we can have a, a bit of a resurgence of a, a dad and a lad project, which has become a thing. Yeah, it may maybe. Uh it depends if he wants to work with it. me again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it changed your relationship with your dad? Um I have a bigger respect for him in what he does. I now know what hard graft he does from day to day. Hmm. Um but not really, not really. <laughs> We're still I still bully him and I still <laughs> insult him and he still insults me. So not, not much has changed. Dynamics exactly the same. It's good to hear. <laughs> and on your university course, obviously these are strange circumstances, really odd times. Um, how have you been affected and your um, fellow students as well, your friends at, at uni? Um, and how much have you been able to do at home? Yeah, it's, it's a, a bit of an awkward one because... On my course, through design and craft, we use the workshops. We have the wood workshop, the ceramics workshop, the polymers workshop, and um, the metal workshop. And when we're at home, we obviously don't have those. So there's been quite a big restriction in what we've been able to make. But we've had, uh, like, what are they called? FaceTime calls, uh, yeah. Zoom calls, or whatever it is, with, with our with our tutors. <laughs> Yes, that's the one <laughs> with our with our tutors, uh, sort of keeping in contact with us, and we we've managed to do a project. And we last when was it? A couple of Thursdays ago, I managed to hand in three projects on time. Actually, before it was early, so I'm very proud of that. Uh, and so yeah, we we've we just we just got to make do. Just mm. got to make do. But we all were desperate to go back in September. Yeah, let's hope, um, let's hope we can get into those workshops as soon as possible. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers what, crossed. What are your long-term aims? What do you aim to do career-wise? Uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I want to do something creative. Mm -hmm. Whatever that may be, I don't know. I want, I want to do something where I'm working with others uh design based but the, it's a big world out there and there's a lot of jobs that i've never even heard of before and if you were to ask me two years ago whether that I, you're gonna if you're gonna tell me in t two years ago that you're, you're gonna be on netflix soon i wouldn't have believed you so things things come and go and i think what i've learned from the show is that to take every opportunity that comes my way what about some of the guest judges that um, came on to the show? Have you got any of their sort of contact details you can maybe get in touch with, you know, when you're starting to get to the end of your third year? Maybe. I've got a lot of contacts now. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, use them. A lot of them, a lot of them are plant-based. Mm. So if I want to do something with gardening, then I've got good contacts. <laughs> <laughs> but whether or not I want to do gardening, I don't know. <laughs> Um, uh, Jim, it's been great to hear about the, the show. We end every podcast with some questions just completely away from what we've been talking about, really. So first one, who do you look yeah. up to, aside from family, as role models and why? 
Uh, yeah, so I recently, I recently read a book uh, called How to Be Idle uh, by Tom Hodgkinson. And he is my role model at the moment, especially in lockdown, because this book literally tells you how to be idle and how to just relax and be happy with not doing anything. So that he is someone that I really look up to at the minute and I've learned quite a lot from this book. Yeah. How to relax. What kind of what kind of what what, what kind of things you, has, have you have you picked up from it? What's, uh, the big, what's the big takeaway? Well, on the front, it has a picture of a guy in a hammock, and okay, uh, yeah. we've we've now got a hammock in the back garden. <laughs> <so> okay, <laughs> that's what I've taken away from it. <laughs> um, where's your favourite place in Sussex, and and how would you ideally spend your spare time? Uh, I. Uh, live in Eastbourne and that's on the on the coast it's on at the beach so I do love being at the beach I love being on the beach with my friends with some good music maybe if it's a very nice day we might even swim in the sea but it is usually very very cold or other than that anywhere on the South Downs mm. anywhere yeah. on the South Downs going, going for a walk love it love just, that just while we're on that well, like, obviously um you've been born and bred in Eastbourne still did there now um for students who are coming to the University of Brighton and uh one of their courses is based on the Eastbourne campus instead what would you say to them and because there might there might be you know obviously the there might be the initial oh it's not Brighton but why what how would you sell Eastbourne <laughs> that's a very good question <laughs> uh <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's, I, I, I don't have an answer to that. It's, Just the uh, beach. It's only his place. Yeah, it's, it's I, place in the U, in the UK or something, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, it's it's the Sunshine Coast, <laughs> so that means something. It is usually quite sunny here yeah. when it's sunny, but most of the other time it's rainy and windy. But we won't talk about that. Let's skip <laughs> over that question. <laughs> When it's sun, when the sun's shining, it's a pretty beautiful place. Um, since the Definitely. coronavirus pandemic, how have you changed? Have you changed your life in any kind of way for the better? Have you sort of changed anything about your day-to-day living? Um, something that I've always struggled with in the past, actually, is to sort of have that motivation to do stuff in my own time, mm. uh, making things, being creative and things like that. So now that we have so much free time, I'd rather be outside making something than sitting inside, may say, and being on my phone or anything like that. So mm. it's sort of taught me to make my own briefs in a way, if that makes sense. And yep. uh, yeah, actually do things with my time that I have. And mm. um, what would you say your guilty pleasure is? Uh, good question. Uh, guilty pleasure. Uh, I'm a... <laughs> I've watched pretty much all of the uh, like Disney films and things like that, and I've watched them multiple times. That's, I guess that's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, one <laughs> stupid thing is if, if you were to put on Shrek 2, <laughs> I could probably recite the whole script because <laughs> I watched it so many times as a kid. <laughs> um, okay, finish this sentence. In five years, I'll be what? I'll be five years older <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope to be doing something creative doing something that I love with people that are great <laughs> that's, that's good enough uh, tell us something about you which most people don't know it's the final question okay I think if you were to go through my wardrobe 90% of the thing, maybe even 99% of the things in there are bought from charity shops. That's good. How, <laughs> That's when, something when, that not many people know. When did you start, when did you start to, to shop in charity shops more? Uh, well, my parents have done it for uh, ever and ever and ever. And I used to absolutely hate it. Mm-hmm. It used to be the worst thing ever. And then they started to buy some cool things. They started to get some branded stuff from charity shops. And I was like... I want some of that and now that's 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 the only place i buy stuff from now whether that, i don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing but it's nice and cheap so <laughs> good stuff um jim look thanks so much for your time it's been great to catch up with you thank you so much um you can still catch up with the big flower fight and binge on all of it 
at once on Netflix. Also check out Jim's work on his Instagram page, the.creator.jim is his account. And we'll pop that in the podcast description as well. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Please do subscribe via YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Bye for now.